It's really strange though doing landscapes on telephoto, but it might just open up a whole new mind frame of compositions and stuff. Yeah, using this lens, it just changes everything for me, composition wise. I'll be here on a 28 usually, getting nice wide um, exposures, but with the 180, it's quite surprising when you're looking through how much it brings. So we've got this Storm Agnes coming in. Well, oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. At the moment, I'm down the beach and I'm sitting in my car waiting for a very special guest who's gonna be coming on the video today. I'll show you more about that shortly. You might even know him, he's a YouTuber. We'll get onto that in a little while when he comes out of his hotel. <laughs> Today I'm going to be shooting a telephoto lens. I've got the Nikon Nikkor F2.8 180mm lens. Which I got recently when I was up in London with a friend. We went and visited a shop called Mr Cad in Pimlico. This place was an absolute treasure trove of film photographer's delight. I'll show you a quick bit of Mr Cad. So anyway, we got this lens and I'm not really, like most of us, into telephoto lenses. I don't do wildlife or anything like that. Um, so mostly I'm out with a 50 millimeter or a 28 mil or an 80 mil, 85 mil lens. If I'm doing portraits, I use digital, so I'll be using a 70 to 200 that I've got uh, with my Canon equipment. But I thought it'd be interesting to see if this telephoto lens can actually fit into my normal work. And I put it out to you guys. I said, what do you want me to shoot? Do you want me to shoot woodland, uh, portrait, seascapes, landscapes, or street photography? And most of you chose seascapes. And most of you then after that chose, come up in the run, in the run up was portraits. So I've come down to the beach and I'm gonna be shooting this telephoto lens. So if you're not sure, a telephoto lens is a lens that has a long focal length. This means that it can bring distant subjects closer to you and are typically used for sports photography, wildlife photography, and portrait photography. But they can also be used for all sorts of other things like landscape photography and street photography. And I have a few telephoto lenses, but I rarely use them. I've got a Paragon 500mm f8 lens for a Nikon fit, I've got a Tamron 75 to 250 push and pull CF Telemacro 3.8 Nikon fit. I have a Sunogar MC 305mm f.8 Shinon fit lens, an Optimax 300mm f5.5 M42 screw fit, and a 400, God knows what this is, f6.3 for another Shinon fit. And I recently got this bad boy, the Nikon Nikkor 180mm f2.8 AIS ED lens. It's a legendary manual focus lens that is still highly sought after today. And it was introduced in 1981 and was one of the first lenses to feature Nikon's extra low dispersion ED glass, which significantly reduces chromatic aberration. And I'll show you what that means. I took a photograph of my Nikon FM3A next to window light at different apertures. If we look at f2.8, you can see there is a slight purple fringe around the camera. We went to f4 and the fringe is there, but not as bad. And then when I went to f5.6, it had completely gone. So I reckon the sweet spot for this lens is f5.6. This was done on a digital camera. But even so, at 2.8, this lens produces the most beautiful background bokeh in the right conditions and also beautiful blur as well. Nice soft buttery blur when you're doing portraits. And the lens is also known for its excellent sharpness. I mean, this thing is tack sharp, even wide open. Now this lens is pretty cool. It is very, very sharp. It's an ED lens, which means extra display Version. So it's got an extra piece of glass in there to, to cut down chromatic aberrations and stuff like that. Um, there was an earlier version. This one, I, think, I believe it's 1981, so it's quite old. And some people say it's one of Nikon's best lenses. I'll tell you what, an half a lump as well. Fully mechanical, fully metal. The quality and even focusing on it is so smooth. You know, after all these years, it's just obviously stood the test of time. This thing could outlast a nuclear war, do you know what I mean? But it is bloody heavy. And I'm not used to telephoto lenses, so I'd be interested to see what I can get around these uh, beaches where I am at the moment. 
um, with, with this lens. I've only bought this lens and I've also bought another telephoto lens that I've got, which is a push-pull lens. This one's a Tamron. I picked this up years ago in a charity shop. I can't remember how much it was, probably about 20 quid. Um, 75 to 250 millimeter lens, and this one's not as fast. It's 3.8 to f32, um, a, a Nikon F fit as well. And I've also bought out the Nikon F6 and a roll, if I can find it, of Ilford FP4. Now, because I don't really can't hand hold this lens, anything pretty much below 250th of a second, when you're using telephoto lenses, it brings everything forward, and you know, not like a 28 mil wide if you're hand holding it everything's moving around in the scene. It's just jittering about. I'll quickly show you an example on video. So I have the 180 millimeter in my hand and you can see it's wobbling all over the shop, which I find makes it difficult handheld to compose landscapes, especially trying to get my straight horizons. Don't forget these lenses were before stabilization, but when we go to a 28 millimeter lens, which is nice and wide, it's much more stable. God only knows how Jack Sparrow and all that lot spotted ships in the distance with their telescopes. If, I, if I'm using this handheld, I need a decent shutter speed. So I'm going to be using the FP4, but I'm going to be pushing this to 400. And it's a nice day. Uh, by pushing it, I'm going to compress my images and get more contrasty look um, out of the film, which I don't mind because I like contrasty prints. And I went down and shot this the other day. I shot it around my village and also shot it on the beach as well. And I must admit, using a telephoto lens, which I said I don't often use, it was so different trying to find compositions or trying to get compositions out of it. And then I realized I can go back to all the same places that I've been before using a telephoto lens and get different compositions. Um, so, so it's almost like a win-win. It's like doing it all over again. Let us know in the comments if any of you lot use regularly a telephoto lens, unless you're a, land, uh, a, um, a wildlife photographer where you're out in the woods with all your camouflage on trying to pick out all the birds. I mean, <laughs> the birds really go for that old trick. I'm sure they must see you guys if you've got your camouflage on and you've got it all over the lens and stuff. They ain't that stupid, surely. I don't know, but it might. It looks cool, I suppose. I'm also going to be taking some portraits as well. Anyway, let's go and pick up my special guest. We'll have a quick chat with him. We'll get down to the beach and uh, we'll take some pictures and find out how good this lens really is. Look who I've got in the car with me. Yeah. It's the legend Peter Elgar. <laughs> <laughs> He's come down on the Isle of Wight for an holiday and he texted me and said, Roger, I'm on the island. Can we go and do some photographing? I said, of course we can. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. Good Lord. I've, I've, I've been, been on a waiting list for this trip and they phoned me up. We've got one place. Would you like to, are you still interested? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> So I booked and we're staying at the Trueville Hotel Sandown. But Sandown, oh dear, there's nothing there to photograph. <laughs> so we're, we've been on a few coach trips, but what are you going to take me to Shanklin and we're going to do some, hopefully, some seascapes and landscapes, but I can't, I can't get up that hill from the down below, oh dear. So it's what camera you bought, Pete? I brought so, my... Show the people the camera. Yeah, I brought this, my 2002 bought tax deductible Hasselblad 501cm. And it's got three lenses, and I've got a flash gun, and I've got some filters, I've got a western exposure meter, and I packed a spare hernia belt as well because of the weight. <laughs> When did you start doing photography? I started in 1951, Festival of Britain year. We had a school trip there from the East Ham Grammar School. And my mate Keith Williams, he, his dad, was uh, he was an inspector of the police, quite well off, comparing my poor old dad, who only worked on the railway, <laughs> bought, him, bought him a camera, a Kodak Brownie Reflex. So Keith uh, got this camera, so we all looked into it. What was the first camera you bought, Pete? The first camera I bought, that was an Ensign Selfix 16 on 120 model, model 2 with a 35 
Ross Express lens, £24, 10 shillings and thrums, and I had to pay that off five shillings a week. How does he even remember that? Jeez. That £24 was a fortune. Especially my dad only earned £14 a week on the railway. And how old was you then? I was about, um, when I got my camera, I was about 16. When I started professional work, the first professional job was 1959. That was in the Ministry of Aviation and the Air Technical Publications branch. And we had to, I had to do a lot of printing, but we went out to aircraft factories to photograph inside all these bits and pieces of aircraft like Vulcan, Bomber, Lightning, Fighter, Shackleton and we had to photograph all this secret stuff that the Russians probably knew what was in there anyway. <laughs> we had to sign the official secret act. Then I did school photography for a while and I got the boot for that because I couldn't book schools. You couldn't what? Co I couldn't book the schools. You couldn't book them? No, I had to go around, before they let me get oh, my I hands, see. I had to go around booking, film, booking schools. Then they boot, gave me the boot from that because I couldn't book the schools. <laughs> so then I got managed to get a job at University College London in scientific and technical photography. I was like eight, eight years till I left because I wanted to see what my first wife was getting up to. So <laughs> I left and started up on my own as a freelance. What do you mean what your first wife was getting up to? Oh, she's getting up to things and um, her and her mother put the house up for sale once over my head. I came home from work and everything. It's for sale board. I didn't want to move. That house was costing me 4900 in you, Brentwood. I hope you got a picture of it. Well, um, the house, yeah. <laughs> I still live in there now. But back in the day, I should imagine there were so many times... Where I've had thought. one failure, and it wasn't my fault. The um, I had a wedding. It was the reception girl at the Brentwood Gazette did her wedding. And I used a two and a quarter square... Pentacon 6 I got in 1971, that's right. 112 quid that was. That's what I got the other day. Did you really? Yeah, Pentacon 6. No. Oh, I'd love you, to see that. You, oh, you commented on the video, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I've got that one in me. Um, I gave the filming for process in the Breeder Studios at Barking. I got a phone call that evening. Can you go back to the wedding and take some more pictures? No, I said, they've all, they've all left. Well, we said we've had a bit of a disaster. I said, what happened? All the films are fogged. Oh my God. Oh They'd my. taken on some 16 year old beginner and he'd gone into the dark room when everybody's films had just come out of the developer and was hanging up to go into the bleach. And he switched the light on oh, and no. everybody's films was fogged. Oh. Black. Oh my God, fathers. Uh, it wasn't my fault. It's the only failure. I had to try and get some black and white prints off of them. How did you get around that? I had to. She, the girl was very, very understanding. Luckily, I still see her now. In the we have pensioners' breakfast in the Conscious Cafe at Brentwood. Sometimes I see her in there. Yeah, she. I never mention her wedding photographs though. <laughs> so well, we've arrived. And <laughs> uh, so what are you hoping to get today, Pete? Right well, the... I'm looking at the weather here, Roger, and it. It's a bit grey and overcast, but there's a glimmer of glimmer of sunshine. There is, it's nice broken clouds. And parts. into the light, you may get some sparkle on the water. Right. So I could do some sparkly pictures, and if you've bought a tripod, I can put I me... Have. So this, this back <laughs> is a 24 shot back, and I've got two 20 film loaded in that, and it's dated 1999. I couldn't believe it. Fuji Astia film dated 1999 in a 24-shot back. It's got 24 on it, see? And um, I had to pay to get it serviced, that back, because it was overlapping. But it's all done now, like new. So I can get 24 shots on 220 film. I've got packs of it. I, I was given it by some photographer who wanted to make room in his fridge for beer. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a good bargain. Yeah, he came to our <laughs> club. Exchange? Came to our camera club. Says anybody still use film? I said, Yeah, I use, I use. But mine's all out of date. Was he pissed? Yeah. No. He said, He said, um, You like out of date film? Yeah. Oh, if you come to my studio, you can have some film. I want to get rid of it to make room in my fridge for beer. So me and my boy rushed there to Benfleet to his studio, 
Oh, you hope this freak. You gave me packs of 10, oh, 120, wow. loads of 35mm infrared colour film, which I'm still using, and some 220 packs of film. And I've never used this. So I took one, had it professionally processed, and it came out, I couldn't believe it, from 1999. Nice. So now I do it myself. If you're enjoying the content that I make, and maybe you'd like to support the work I do on the channel by joining me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube member. For as little as $2 or £2 a month, you can get access to my other videos and posts as well as early releases. Or simply subscribe, hit the like button, sit back, relax and enjoy the videos. Cheers! Now this out of date film, because most of my film is still out of date. So we see what, what it gets now. That says um, the one before 11, so that gives me for a slow shutter speed. That says um, 15th F22. Yeah, that blur it a bit. Oh, <laughs> then, um, sorry, I've got to use a filter, haven't I? So we're going to put on a red filter. That cut down the light. So we're going to. We're going to be able to use two stops um, slower than that, so that'll be that'll be quarter of a second. That'll just blur it nicely. And if you're interested in Pete's photographs, um, I'll I'll put a link in the description of this video to Pete. And if you want to see them, you can contact him yourself, as uh, I doubt he'll develop these in time before I've got this video out. We've got quite a rough sea today, we've got this Storm Agnes. Uh, we're kind of getting the tail end of it down here on the Isle of Wight. So the sea's really choppy, so hopefully I can get some nice shots um, of some choppy waves. It's really strange though doing landscapes on telephoto, but it might open a new language for me with, uh, with seascape photography, you know? Because it's something that I'm really not used to. So it might just open up a whole new mind frame of compositions and stuff down the beach, especially looking out at the sea. This is crazy. There's a nice shot, a little tiny bird on top of a, a port and marker. Oh, I got that. That was 2.8, I wasted that one. F11 320th of a second. I lock that exposure against the sky. I don't know where Pete is. It's really strange. I'm looking through here and everything's wobbling around. F11 320th of a second. That's why you need a tripod if you're going to be shooting slower shutter speeds. Oh God, it's hard work. It really is. I'm trying to keep that horizon straight. Um, <laughs> good fun though. Stay there, can I take your picture? The light is beautiful on, on your face through here. There you go, thank you so much. If you can only have one camera, one lens and one film. Oh my God. Yeah. Hey, they said, Pete, we're going to put you on a desert island for six, yeah. six weeks. Yeah. You've only got one camera, one lens to take, one film. Oh my God, fellas. And one pair of pants. Yes, that's it. <laughs> what would you take? Well, um, what would you take? If, there's, if you're on a desert island, there's, you won't need a load of different lenses, really. I mean, I'd, I'd probably take a... My, you can't charge no batteries? No, no, I would take my... 1965 Leica M2. Whoa. 
Yeah, which I bought off a camera club member for 400 odd quid. That was a good deal. And um, the F2 Simicron, probably. And um, Ilford FP4 film. Yeah. Ilford FP4? Yeah, I like that, yeah. Oh, I used to use Oro NP22. Right. That, I used loads and loads of it because it was. So after going back to mine for a cuppa, I dropped Pete off back at the hotel where he was about to go off to the steam railway with his coach party. And I went back home to test the last few frames I had on portraits of my daughter at different apertures. So I'm gonna do a portrait of, uh, I'm gonna do a couple of portraits, F2.8, F4 and F5.6, and maybe one at F8, I'll show you the difference. Uh, the sun's over that way, here's me model, my daughter Jess, say hello Jess. <laughs> And I'm using this uh, gold reflector. It's just going to reflect some nice light back off from the sun into Jess's face. You'll see how it works. Look over this way, Jess. That's normal. And we can just light her face up nicely there. As simple as that. But for that, I need someone else to hold it for me. Jacob! <laughs> this one's at f2.8, so we'll do one at 2.8. Okay, Jess, open your eyes. Lovely. And we'll do another one at f4. Trying to focus on the eye that's closest to me there it is there okay just open your eyes go lovely now we'll do another one at f 5.6 i'll just be interested to see what the depth of field is like and the sharpness i think 5.6 with this lens is probably its sweet spot done that's 5.6 so i've now got the tamron lens on i got this from a charity shop i don't know probably about 20 quid proper cheap um <laughs> it's a push pull lens look focus this push pull and it got 3.8 is its widest open. 3.8, 5.6 and f8. I'm gonna do those three now. I'll show you the results. Right, hang on Jess, look at me. One, two, three, hang on. Open your eyes, go. This one's 5.6. One, 5.6. Cross oh, really wobbling in my hands. And the last one, Why? f8. So like I said earlier on, the telephoto lens is not something that I usually take out for any scapes. Um, this was, I think this was the first time I've taken a, a telephoto lens, or this 180mm lens at least, out on to do some scapes. And it did, I did find it a little bit tricky trying to compose because I know the area and when I'm looking through, everything's really close up. I'm like, oh Christ, I've run out of room. Um, one of the photographs, I did run out of room. I'll show you that now. Um, I couldn't get the groin in and I had limited sky. I wanted to get some sky in and I only had about an inch at the top of the, the print. So the, the, you know, the composition weren't that great. I'd like to have had the sky a little bit lower, but I'd run out of room. I kept walking back and walking back with this. Uh, so a lot of learning um, with this, but I'm looking forward to going forward and seeing what I can do. The portrait side of things, I think it's wonderful. I use a 70 to 200 lens on digital portraits, headshots and stuff, but uh, film-wise, I usually use an 85mm, such as this Nikon one here, or a 55mm or 50mm, such as this Nikon Mac micro lens. And also my landscapes are always often, I'm on a 28mm so I can get nice and wide. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing more portraits on film with this lens. And talking about telephoto lenses, they are fun. This Tamron one actually surprised me. I think that's the first time that I've used it on a portrait on my daughter Jess. And I think they came out really nice. I haven't gone into dark room yet and printed them, but after scanning, they've come out really nice. So I was really impressed with this lens that, that only cost me about 20 odd quid. Um, and the other lenses, like I showed you, that I've got, cheap and cheerful lenses. They're not the best lenses in the world, but they are fun, you know, and get you into telephoto photography. And uh, sometimes you can get some surprising results. So I certainly wouldn't, um, you know, count these, these old lenses out, like this Paragon 500 millimeter. You can see the stars and stripes on the moon through this thing on a good night, um, but they are good fun to use. As for street photography, do you know what? I, I, I can't see myself taking this out on the streets. I might get some really interesting pictures, but I'm just gonna look really obvious, you know, long lenses and, and stuff. I don't know until I, <laughs> until I try it out. You saw me take a few in the village, um, but if I'm doing street photography, I generally like to take a 28 mil or, um, or a small 50 mil with me and, you know, kind of keep my subjects within the zone focusing, if you like, within a, a, a couple of meters and selectively take my shots. But um, I'll be interested to see what I get with this. Also a street photography, I'm not too sure that I like um, out of focus background. So most of my street stuff, I like, you know, 
F11, F16, keeping everything in focus so you can see what was also going on in the background rather than blurring it all out. And also, uh, when Pete came back to my house, he saw some of my negatives hanging up and a couple of them were quite thin and he went, oh my God, he said, why are you using filling flash? And I was like, I don't even think about it, Pete. You know, like I've always tried to use natural daylight. He's like, get some filling flash on subjects. He said, I'm going to be taking filling flash up to the steam railway later on and I'll be using it there. So, you know, um, a lesson learned. I'm going to take your heed on that one, Pete, and start using a flash more and see what I can do with that out, outside um, when I need it, obviously. But, um, you know, it's interesting talking to guys of experience such as Pete. You can certainly learn a lot, and I did in that afternoon, in that morning, sorry, with Pete. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks to everyone that subscribes and supports the channel. I really do appreciate it. Have a great weekend, and I'll catch you next time. Famous Biggie, you do your video in outside here as well. Yeah, I do, yeah. Oh, it's a big garage there. That's when we film is in the fridge. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Smashing, we've arrived. We've arrived. Come on, let's have a cup of tea, Pete. Yes, please.